It doesn't matter how much a solar panel costs. Looking at the cost of a single solar panel doesn't really matter that much because solar systems have a lot of components. And the solar panel is just one of those com components, even though it's possibly the most important. You have to think in terms of system cost and system benefit, just like you would a house or a car. Would you ever ask a home builder, how much is a two by four? Well, maybe, but it's not going to tell you how much it costs a house is. Or maybe at a car dealership, if you ask, how much does a door handle cost? It doesn't really make sense. Maybe from a replacement perspective or repairs. If you know how much systems cost, you can get a great deal, regardless of the system size or the solar panel type. Make sure you know the basics so you can get a good deal. I'm Joel Robinson, founder, builder, pilot, and solar entrepreneur in Montana. I help people and businesses take back control of their energy, money, and future by using renewable energy. You can save money or just do something really cool. So you heard I install solar and you're really interested and want to know about renewable energy. So here comes the question. How much does the solar panel cost? Well, actually it doesn't cost that much. But here's the thing. You can't just buy a solar panel and use it, especially on a residential install. So it doesn't really matter. And when we talk about solar, we talk about the entire system cost, all of the components that go into it to make it work. In fact, solar panels might only be 20 to 30% of the total project, which seems kind of hard to believe. Because it's doing all the work, it's generating all the power. Well, all those other components help support the solar and deliver the power so that it's usable. So where do the rest of the costs go? Well, specifically we're looking at racking that supports the solar panels. And it can be a ground mount or roof mounted system. Either one of those is racking. Ground mounts are more expensive. Roof mounted is cheaper, but there's a lot of options when it comes to racking. In particular, your roof type, if it's shingles or if it's metal. Metal mounted racking systems are more expensive. Composite feet are, are cheaper and easier to install. But we do love those metal roofs. They are sure a clean install. We have wiring, inverters, permits, fees, and of course the labor to install, connect, and commission those systems. Now I get it. Most people ask about solar panels as a way to start the conversation. And it's kind of like asking, how's the weather? How's the project going? But folks who really understand solar, the experienced buyers and commercial agents, they skip that question entirely and they get right down to it. What's your cost per watt installed? Because that's the number that really matters. Let's break that down a little bit. Cost per watt installed is an industry term used to describe the relative cost per watt, regardless of the components. And it's usually instated in terms of dollars per watt. Something like $3 a watt, which has been in, in the industry for a while, two fifty dollars a watt. Those are coming down in commercial Great projects are, are much lower than that because they have scale. So let's just do some quick math to help you get an idea of how these systems are sized. Let's do 20 400 watt solar panels. So that's 20 times 400 is 8,000 watts or an 8K system. So if we buy a system that is $2.50 per watt times the 8,000 watts, is a $20,000 system. That price is important because it's relative between different types of systems. How would you ever compare a system from different installers if they had different components, different styles, maybe different wiring, and definitely different inverters? That can be a big cost between the two. So cost per watt is a way to compare quotes from different installers because it's installed. And what's really important is that that cost per watt is installed. And coming from an installer, it better be installed. So let's dig into that a little bit more and talk about panels and how much they do cost, even if that's not always really the way to size these systems. Panels come in all shapes and sizes and efficiency, 
Right now, most residential panels are in the 400 watt range. They can be 420s or 430s. Even just a few years ago, we were installing 370s and 390s, so it has grown. And just recently, I completed a commercial project with 540 watt bifacial solar panels. Those are big, they're really tall, and they're very heavy. Other things that can affect pricing is bifacial, which means a two-sided solar panel, and they're, they can be more expensive because they have a higher rating. Other things that affect price are durability ratings, like hail rating and snow load ratings that can increase the cost of the solar panel. Some ha panels have extra structural framing to handle tough environments like heavy snow by adding an extra rail to the back of the solar panel, which we like that here in Montana because sometimes we'll get a really heavy snow load that has a lot of water in it. The water content per foot of snow can be higher. It's a lot heavier. We saw rain on top of snow cause solar panels to break. It crushed them. The, the weight was was too much. But all that add costs to cost of a solar panel. And if you ask me how much does a solar panel cost, well, let's talk about what kind of solar panel we're talking about. What's a good fit for the environment because they're not all made the same. Costs are different for each type. Sometimes the components can cost just as much as the solar panels. Like microinverters can cost just as much as the solar panels themselves. So the cost of the solar panel might only be 20 or 30 percent of the overall project, which is which is pretty small, especially since they're doing all the heavy lifting. And we haven't even talked about sales, marketing, or financing. This is where things can get tricky. Financing fees, called dealer fees, can balloon the cost of a system. It has nothing to do with the components or how much it's going to produce each year. Sometimes I can add thousands of dollars to the cost. In a market where electricity is really expensive, those added costs can be okay. It's not that big a deal. But where the cost of electricity is low, like in the Pacific Northwest, we need to keep the cost as low as possible and there's no room for dealer fees. And the discussion about the federal tax credit going away, I don't think it's about energy. I think it's about flushing out some of these shady dealer fees and, and bloated commissions. I think we can do a better job there. Let's get that out of the industry, but make sure that solar is, is preserved. After all that, the other costs are labor and install. And this is the guys that do all the heavy lifting. They make all the magic happen. This is good old human expertise and elbow grease. It makes it all work. And this is part of the price that actually should be rewarded because no artificial intelligence is going to install a solar system soon. This is boots on the roof, guys in the attic, pulling wire and, and making connections. We love our installers. These guys are great. Solar installers are like a crossbreed between electricians and roofers. And electricians are held to a very high standard. They have to pass inspection and, and get certified. Roofers, eh, not so much, but they do have to work really hard. They have to crawl all over the roof, and inside that attic. Imagine that. Electricians on the roof? That's a solar installer. We clean up our own trash too, by the way. So when you step back and look at the full picture, solar panels just a small fraction of the total cost, which is kind of sad because the panels are doing all the great work. They provide all the value. If we could just stick solar panels to the roof and wirelessly transmit electricity to your home, we would and it would be a lot cheaper. All the other costs support the solar and transfer the electricity into a usable form, which by the way, DC power isn't really that usable. So our houses and businesses use alternating current or AC power, but the solar panels produce direct current or DC power. So technically the power is unusable from the solar panels in our houses, unless it goes to a battery but in our houses, it's not. it has to be inverted, which is very efficient, but it has to be inverted from DC to AC by some sort of device, usually called an inverter or a microinverter. If we could reduce some of the other costs, especially sales 
and financing, we could make solar even more attractive and more accessible. Let's get the cost of solar down as cheap as possible so everyone can enjoy this wonderful technology. I love solar. It's amazing. We want to see the cost come down. Let's put solar on every roof. Look at Australia. They've dramatically reduced system costs by cutting down on marketing spend and improving efficiency. That's something we should replicate here. Because if we lower the total system cost, not just panel prices, we can increase the value, shorten the payback period, and boost the ROI. Solar has so many benefits, it's amazing. Some of which are reduced costs, but there are other benefits too. Solar happens to be the cheapest form of energy available, and it's also the fastest to install. I can install this entire system in just a day or two. We're really excited about that, so let's get to work. Hey, please subscribe to the channel, click on the free energy calculator, or even look for the five things you should do before getting a solar system to make sure you're informed.